Hey Geometry team and welcome to Unit 10 Day 3 Part 2. We are doing another part today because we are continuing on the volume. So we finished um, in the previous video doing volumes of cylinders and prisms and the formula for that was whatever the area of the base was times the height so that you basically had a giant stack of whatever you had for the area on the bottom and then stacked up to get the height. Well, today we are moving into cones and pyramids. And if you notice about cones and pyramids, they start off being structured very similarly to our prisms and cylinders, where they have a base that will be a certain shape, but they only have one of those bases instead of two, like our prisms. So the base can be the same shape, but instead of coming up to a second base on top that matches, it comes to a point. And because of that, the volume is not going to be the same. So what we want to do today, first of all, is see how it differs from the volume of the prism. Because again, the base is the same, so hopefully we can still use something about the base. And so today we're going to have a little practical demonstration. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this particular pyramid and I'm going to fill it with water to measure its volume. Oops, and there goes my lid closing right on me so that it messes things up, because of course it will. Okay, so the volume of one pyramid, oh, it doesn't fill up this prism, which has the same size base. Let's see how full it is. If I do another pyramid, fill it up, pour it in, oh, still didn't fill it all the way up. Let's try one more time. So third pyramid. Now a third pyramid exactly filled up this prism. I don't know if you can tell, let's see if I can bring it down here, but that thing is about as full as it can get without overflowing. So it takes three of the pyramids to fill one of the prism that matches its base. So this pyramid is a third of this prism. Now, what about cones and cylinders then? You're gonna notice that these have the same height and the same base. And so let's see if their volume is also a third to a full. So let's see, I'm gonna fill up my little cone here and pour it into my cylinder. Oh, no, that's not full at all. Nope, not at all. We'll pour a little more in. So here's my second cone. Still doesn't fill up my cylinder. Third cone. And now we fill it up just to the top again. I come here to the side, you can see that cylinder is about as full as it can get without overflowing. And so what we're going to see from this and learn from this is since we already had our formulas for our cylinder and our prism, is that we can find the cone ones just by doing a third of whatever we already had. So now smash cut, now we're going to look at how that looks on paper with an actual lesson. So let's remember for pyramids, they are just gonna be like prisms, but only a third as big. So if you'll notice the formula for the volume of this pyramid now is going to be the area of its base times the height of the pyramid. So we've still got our base area, whatever shape that is, times my height. But now since instead of going straight up into a prism, it slants up into a point for a pyramid, we're going to have one third the volume we had before. So we're going to work everything the same. Now you just have to remember it's only one third. Let's look at that in practice. So over here, I've got myself a pyramid. If I look down here, I have a 10 by 11 shape on the bottom with right angles. So this is going to be a rectangular pyramid. It almost looked square, but don't be fooled. These are not the same. But it doesn't matter anyway, because I know that the volume of this thing is gonna be a third, the area of the base 
times the height. Now the area of this base is going to be however I find the area of this rectangle, which will be length times width or base times height, little b base because it's a linear base. And so for the ba area of this base rectangle, it's going to be 10 times 11. And so the area of my base is going to be 110. So I can come over here now and go, OK, my volume of this whole pyramid then will be 1 third. This 110 I got for the area of the base and then my height is given to me, that's 16. And so my total volume is going to be 586.67. And recalling that volume is measuring the number of little cubes that fill up a three-dimensional space, we're going to have this be in inches cubed. All right. Moving on, let's try something slightly different here. For problem number three, what kind of pyramid do I have? I know I got a pyramid because I see it coming to a point here. I'm going to look and see that the base has length times width that are both 14. So this one actually is a square pyramid. I tried to write that with a Y and I don't know why, but that's supposed to be an E there. Okay, so in order to do this one, I'm going to need to do volume is one third the area of the base times the height. But let's see, since this is a square on the bottom, the area of this base will be a side squared. And so that will be 14 squared, which is going to give me 196 for the area of the base of this pyramid. So I come in and I go, great, volume is 1 third, the area of the base is 196. I go in to put the height and oh, I have a slight problem. I have this length here. This is the slant height running up the side of the pyramid. That is not the height of the whole thing. You don't do your height slanting down to the floor somewhere away from you. It needs to be perpendicular straight up and down to the middle of the base. And so I'm going to need to figure out the height of my pyramid. Well, let's see what pieces I have. I do have this slant height. And if I draw from the base of that slant height to this middle, I know that that's going to be half the distance across. So I know that this is going to be 7. So now I can use Pythagorean theorem to figure out the height of my pyramid. So I'm going to come over here now. Okay, in order to use Pythagorean theorem, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I have one of the legs is 7, but I don't have this height at all. So that's going to be going there. And then I have my slant height is 25. So I can plug that all in. When I put that in there, this is going to end up giving me 49 plus whatever my height squared was equals 625. So when I subtract that, I end up getting 576 here. And I have to square root both sides so that my height ends up being 24. So now I have this height right here that's perpendicular to the base. I can now come over here and put that in as the height of my pyramid. And the rest of this now is just calculating. The volume is going to end up being 1,568. And of course, it will be in cubic feet. And you're probably noticing already that both on the volume of my prisms and on the volumes of these pyramids, the numbers get big really fast because volume is so much more. You use so many more numbers multiplied together. You're going to get much larger volumes than you were getting of surface areas come down to number five now. We look at this guy and, oh, it's definitely a pyramid. It's coming to a point on the top. Let's look at the bottom. The bottom is a triangle and it's even a right triangle. So this is a triangular pyramid. So I'm going to be using my same volume formula, which is one third the area of the base times the height. And let's see. I need to find the area of that base. 
So this base here is a triangle, and the formula for the area of a triangle is going to be one half the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. So I come over here and I go, okay, the base of my triangle here is going to be 14. Now I need the height of the triangle. And notice I'm not looking up here at this guy. This is the height of my pyramid. I need, I'm focusing right now just on the area of this pink triangle. I need its height. I don't know what that is. So once again, since it's a right triangle, I can come over here and use my Pythagorean theorem to figure it out. So I go, okay, I have a leg and I have the hypotenuse of that right triangle. So I can do 14 squared plus b squared equals the hypotenuse is 22.1 squared. So when I work that out, this ends up being 292.41 and I end up having 17.1 for this side of that triangle, which I can then use in the formula for the area of that triangle. And so when I put that in, the area of my base ends up being 119.7. And since you're curious, since that's an area, that would be in square meters because it's an area. But I'm going to take that and come park it in up here in my volume formula. So for my volume, I'm going to have one-third, and then the area of that base, which was 119.7. And then I need the height of the whole thing, which is 19. And here's a fun bonus fact. Our base area was in meters squared. The height is in plain meters. And if you remember your exponent rules from way back in algebra, to find when you multiply two bases with the different exponents, you just add the exponents. So m squared times m to the 1 is going to end up giving me m to the 3rd. So that's where we get that cubic thing as well. As you can see, even the algebra works out. I knew it had to be cubic meters to do a volume. But now I can also see that even the algebra of meters squared times another meter will give me meters cubed, just like it's supposed to work out with the algebra. The algebra matches the geometry. Who knew? And then because I've been working on this the whole time, let's go ahead and do the volume. The volume, when you multiply all this out, comes out to be 758.1. And we just played around and looked at it. It had to be meters cubed, and the algebra came out to be meters cubed as well. Turning it over now, cones worked the same way. My volume is going to be one third the area of the base times the height. But since this is a circle on the base, my base formula is going to be pi r squared. That's the only difference here. In fact, I didn't even need to write this part here. I could have stuck with this, and it would have been the same thing. And so when I go to work it, I'm just going to be doing the same stuff. So I'm not going to do as many of these problems because I'm just using this formula with pi r squared in it. So starting here with number 7, to find the volume of any pyramid or cone, it's going to be one-third the area of your base times your height. So this area of my base, since it's a circle, it's going to be pi r squared. And so the area of this base will be pi times and they gave me my radius was 9 squared. And so the area of my base comes out to be 81 pi. And I'm not going to even figure out what that is yet. I'm just going to come park it into my formula here. So I have 1 third. The area of my base was 81 pi. And then the height of this whole cone is 17 yards. And so when I work this out, the volume ends up being 1,441 point nine nine yards and remember volume cubed and so I had the yards squared in my area and another multiplied by another dimension of yards here gives you your yards cubed you don't have to put it in the middle you can put it at the end that you know it's going to be cubic anything I'm not going to work through eight and nine but I am going to remind you that since your formula for the area of the base is pi r squared radius squared that if I give you the diameter of the base of that cone, you need to remember to cut it in half. 
So this is the diameter of 5, so my radius on this one would be 2.5. And the diameter of this one is 27, and so the radius is going to be 13 and a half. And so just be watching for that as you work through those. In fact, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do number 9. Might as well. Um, on this one, again, I'm going to be using my volume formula is one-third area of the base times the height. So I come over here and go, great, I'm going to do the area of the base is going to be pi, and it'll be the radius squared. So here I'm going to have to put in that 13.5 instead of the diameter of 27. And so the area of that base is going to end up being, oh, what is 13.5? I forgot to figure that out earlier. So let's see, 13.5 squared comes out to be 182.25, and then the pi, which I'll figure out later. So you go, okay, my volume is going to be one-third that area, which is 182.25 pi. And then I'm ready to put in the height of my pyramid and, oh, I don't have the height of my pyramid. I have the slant height, and I have this radius, but I do not have the height. So once again, good old Pythagorean theorem is going to save the day. So let's come over here and set that one up. I'm going to have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And in this case, let's see, my height is one of the sides, my radius is one of the sides, and my slant height is the hypotenuse. So I'm going to have 13.5 squared plus whatever the height will be for my b, and then 22.5 squared. And so that ends up being 182.25 plus my height squared is 506.25. And why, yes, I did figure this out ahead of time. When I do this, I end up getting h squared equals 324. And so I can square root both sides, and my height comes out to a nice pretty whole number. Imagine that. It's 18. That won't happen all the time. Don't get too comfortable with these whole numbers. We don't always live in happy whole number land, but you got lucky this time. So my height here is 18 which I can now come and put in that volume formula I was working on. And so now my volume is going to end up being 3435.33. And since this is volume, I'm finding I'm going to be using kilometers cubed or cubic kilometers. So imagine cubes that are a kilometer on the side. That is a big old cone here. One last problem to focus on. Let's do a word problem. Let's do a practical application. I do this kind of thing all the time because I either have to use mulch for my front yard or I have to um, do gravel to fill in something for a French drain, all sorts of things where I have to use volume. And so here, I'm going to do this one where we've got Katie Lynn is building a sand castle and she had to buy bags of sand. And anything you buy where it fills up space, you're going to be doing it with volume. And so these ones, the bags of sand, each hold 1,200 cubic inches of sand. And she just wants to know if she has enough to do this thing. And so here's the pyramid she's trying to build. And we need to figure out its volume to see if this volume of sand is enough for this. So let's look at our formula here. We're going to be doing the volume of a square pyramid which of course is still just going to be one-third the area of the base times the height. So the area of the base will be a side squared, since it's a square pyramid, which will be 25 squared, which is 625. So you go, great. I'm going to come over here and do my volume is one-third 625 times. And oh, look, I was given the height this time. I didn't have to pull out Pythagorean theorem today. Yes. And so I plug that all in, and I end up getting 3750 cubic inches. Okay. Well, how much sand did she buy? Well, she bought three bags of 1,200. So she bought three bags of 1,200 is going to give her 3,600 cubic inches of sand that she bought. But I need 3750. So will she have enough sand? No. She's short 150 cubic inches. 
And so this is actually a very practical application. This is what's going to be figured out all the time. So she would need to buy a fourth bag to cover that last 150 cubic inches to fill up her pyramid. Okay, thank you team. Enjoy doing volume and we'll see you next time.